Hello everybody and uh, welcome to the 6 weekly hacks episode. Uh, in this episode I've got a few more hacks for you. Uh, I've got the uh, automatically naming ranges which is a really useful one. Uh, I quick fractions uh, which uh, just lets you write your fractions in really easily. Uh, and a subtotals formula which allows you to sum and count only the visible cells which is going to be really useful. Uh, so uh, let's just jump straight into it this week uh, with our first hack. So welcome to our first hack of the week which is auto named ranges uh, and this one's in response to an email from a guy called Mark he sent me through one of his macros that was really useful uh, just to let you really quickly name one of the ranges uh, but what I wanted to do was uh, go one slightly better and show you a shortcut for automatically naming all of your ranges all in one go uh, without any need for macros as well so it's very simple so here I've got a table with various data in it you might recognize it from some of the earlier videos uh, and what I want to do is I just want to be able to ha have my ranges selected uh, and I want to name them like as such so you just type in, in there but what you can actually do is you can name all of them in one go uh, very quickly and if you just highlight them and press control shift and F3 uh, and then you can create names from your selection so in this case uh, in my selection I want the names of each of my columns to be the uh, the titles in the top so if I untick left column and leave tick top row uh, that's going to create the names from the top row and if I press OK uh, and now when I look at my name drop down box you'll see that I've got item value I've got month uh, and it's named each column by the value in the top which is exactly what I want so hopefully that helps a lot of you out uh, and that's it for our first hack of the week So our second hack of the week is quick fractions uh, and this gets around something that I find quite often very frustrating is that if you want to type in a fraction say 1 divided by 3 uh, and you press enter what it does is it actually converts it to a date for you which is very frustrating I don't want that I want basically the equivalent to 0.3333333 but I don't want to type in 0.3333333 because that's going to give me some rounding errors I want to be able to type 1 divided by Free, uh, and not get the 1st of March um, and there's a couple of ways to do this uh, the easiest way uh, I've found to overwrite this is to actually just go 0 and then space and then 1 divided by 3 uh, and then that just puts in your fraction for you and you'll see that the value of the cell is equal to 0 0.3 recurring uh, and it works for any fraction so 1 space 1 divided by 2 uh, at 0 space 1 divided by 2 and that puts in 0 0.5 uh, and so it's really useful and quick way of writing your fractions without having any problems so 7 divided by 8 uh, and then we've got 0 0.875 so very quick very easy to use I'm not really going to go into it much more because it's a nice quick one So my third hack of the week is subtotals and this formula is very useful for doing basic things like sum, counts, average uh, whilst uh, ignoring any hidden values. So you'll notice here I've got two sets of formulas, one using the normal count and sum and one using the subtotals formula. Uh, and if I have this table here with all fills at the top, if I select just one thing from here, so if I just put Bruce on uh, you'll see that these formulas stay the same because they work across the range anyway uh, whereas these formulas will uh, amend themselves to only show the visible ones uh, and it also works for if people have just hidden things so if you just hide these like this it also works for that as well uh, and uh, so that's very useful uh, if I just quickly go over how you use this then so if I delete these and start again so uh, first of all I will normally just copy any formulas I've written already rather than starting them from scratch uh, and 
Oh, just got some post delivered, which is exciting. Uh, and so here, I need to change my count formula. So I just change the count to subtotal. Uh, and then let's go into here. And um, it's asking us for two parameters. It's asking us for a function number uh, and then our ref. So we've already got our ref in. And that's just our range that we want to be counting. Uh, and if we just click on the subtotal to bring up the help, and scroll down here we've got this table which tells us what numbers we can put in for the function number so I find our function down the right hand side so I want to use the count one and then I've got a choice of the number two or 102 and I'm going to use 102 because this column here the hundreds are the formula numbers that ignore the hidden values so I'm going to put in 102 so jump back over to our formula 102 comma to split the parameters up and then our range uh, and then that's our formula. Uh, and then same for sub, let's just go subtotal. And then again, we need our function number, so let's just bring back up our help. Uh, and its sum is 109. Notice how you've got average, minimum, max, product, standard deviation, var variance. Um, you can use all of these functions with this particular um, subtotal formula. So let's put in 109, 109, enter, uh, and now I've got my two formulas, and you'll see that when I select my various things, it's going to total them up as appropriate. Uh, and so that is it for uh, the hacks this week. Uh, if you've got your own hacks, I'd love to hear about them. Uh, the guys at work have started giving me loads, which is really useful. Uh, so... Um, Thanks a lot and I'll catch you next week with some new hacks.